and we begin to consume those things that represent protein. So I said to her, I am forced to ask you another question. What is sickle cell anemia? She said that sickle cell anemia was a disease that was acquired by black people 10,000 years ago in the jungles of Africa. <laughs> and that our blood went through mutation. I say mutation 10,000 years ago. But 10,000 years ago, we didn't know you guys. <laughs> But you said that our blood with true mutation after the cause of sickle cell anemia. Dr. Stanford from the Georgetown Pediatric Hospital in Washington told me that. Not the newspaper wasn't around to hear what this woman was going to be. A professional woman is regurgitating. So I said, what is sickle cell mutation? I said, but I have a brother that goes around the world and he preaches things and he says things in reference to food and nutrition. His name is Dick Gregory. He said at Cramden Hall that God gave us sickle cell to fight malaria. Well, since I know for a fact that God didn't tell Dick Gregory that, he must have gotten that statement from your brother. And the statement that you're giving me is also from your brother. And there are two conflicting statements. One says, God, you says mutation. I'm confused. I say, it's neither God nor mutation. It's the deprivation of iron. Iron flowing. Vegetable iron. Ever since we were removed from the diet that was designed for us, in the jungles, as they call it, our body has been deteriorating 500 years ago. Here we are. We're eating food, we call it. Sure, we eat food, but are we being nourished? In Washington, D.C., there is to occur two things that I must share with you that is important. Your brother said me, the uneducated boy, had to go through some of the most challenging moments with the physician. Washington, D.C., Achilles trauma, sickle cell anemia. The doctors cannot cure sickle cell. Oh, they can. They can't cure anything because the methodology is off the mark. So, Achilles trauma has sickle cell. She's two. Her daddy came and snatched her at the hospital against the doctor's will and knowledge, took her to Silver Spring. I began to treat her. Three months passed. Akila is well. She doesn't have the upper pulmonary disorder, which is the company of sickle cell, which is thalassemia. Am I right? The little girl is playing. She's happy. Why? She's lacking of iron. We all are lacking of iron, including me. So they caught up with us and took the parents to the hospital with the police and took me in a police car from 2010 Kendall Street Northeast in DC to the hospital. Well, me, I'm a regular looking man all the time. I dress like this all the time, but just funky. And I had these funky shoes on. And <laughs> I, I had these burger socks on that with bare feet. And, and, and in walks in the superintendent of the hospital, Dr. Steinberg. This is showdown time. <laughs> the boy from the jungle against philosophy. <laughs> Who is this man? <laughs> That's me. This, uh, that Dr. Sebi. What kind of doctor are you? I said, well, I don't know what kind of um, I didn't know we came in kinds. <laughs> uh, you know, I had people when they need help. I, I, I don't know how to be a kind of. 
But before we get into this very tasteful dialogue, I want to submit to you the log that I kept for 90 days that I gave this little girl on her diet and what I gave her as a substance to reverse sickle cell anemia. She goes through it. Boom, 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 boom. Oh! You did not give a killer any protein. Oh my God! This man didn't give the child any protein! I said, I don't even know what is protein. Because I don't know. I mean, one years old, I've never found protein. Unless the great doctor said we think that protein is a necessary food. I said, I didn't say that. You say that. But as for protein, Is it electrical? Why do you ask that? I said because the human body is made up of two, 102 minerals and they all are electrical. The body doesn't assimilate anything unless it is electrical. Nothing unless it is electrical. That is how the body assimilates things. Is protein electrical? And if it is electrical, Dr. Steinberg, it has to have a certain amount of electrons per atom. Well, I don't know that. Protein is one of the 19 amino acids, the building block of life. Oh, God. <laughs> I said, I'm really confused. Amino acids. The human body is not made up of amino acids, nor any alphabetical letter like vitamin A that the found in carrots. The body is made up of minerals. So where do we accommodate amino acids in the human body? How do we do that, Dr. Steinberg? Dr. Steinberg, I'm confused. You're leading me in a path that I, it was virtually unknown to me, amino acids. Are they electrical? I want you to identify protein. Nobody can. You can, I can, and nobody can. It's a made up word. Has no place in the human body. And the policy is, you find the highest concentration of protein in pork meat. And when someone is suffering with Alzheimer's, he have an extra protein in his blood. Tell me when protein no longer become equitable. It's something else now, isn't it? Yes. I'll say that to Let me ask you a question. What is sickle cell anemia? Well, sickle cell anemia is a disease that black people got 10,000 years ago because their blood went through mutation. I said, oh, God. Oh, I said. I'm really delirious now. Because we have a brother named Dick Gregory that said in Cranston Hall that sickle cell was given to us by God to fight malaria. You now said it's mutation. The problem with both statements is that they both came from Europe because Dick Gregory was not trained by an African perspective. He was trained by your brother, and your brother told you it's mutation, and your brother told the grave it's God. Well, let me tell you something, Dr. Sandberg. It's neither God nor mutation. It's the deprivation of iron probing. And I think that I'm sick and tired of this little moment, sitting here, being interrogated, and you have no premise or foundation. Let me get the hell out of here. And I left. You understand? That's a bit of arrogance of this Sagittarius. You don't play with me. I didn't come to be played with. And I don't play with anyone. Now, the second one is on the way out. 
The bulletin board read, Sickle Cell meeting on Georgia Avenue, May 18, 1983. <laughs> the people that are with me said, you got to go to that meeting. I said, are you crazy? Are you out of your mind? I am not going to be able to talk. I am not part of the elite. I'm the boy that doesn't belong to any organization. I'm the boy that doesn't have anyone to defend him and help him. Why should they give me audience? One of the women said, you got to go anyway. So I went. I went in with my bourbon stuff and my white pants and shirt. And all the doctors on Georgia Avenue and the Sickle Cell Research Foundation building that you may know. I walk up there, I felt strange because all of the doctors, they went to school for many, many, many years. They didn't think they go to anything. <laughs> I sit there and waiting because there's a Frenchman from Abidjan who is coming to give us a talk on sickle cell anemia. Dr. Pierre Lander Dahl is the great hematologist in Abidjan. Listen to what this man is going to say. Listen carefully now. I want you all to pay attention because I didn't come here to confuse you. I came here to share information with you that was shared with me and that I have gathered over the years not to come with some lies to you. You are my family. And if I have to dig you in the grave, then I'm not doing anything too beautiful, isn't it? We have to be ethical. We have to be moral. We have to have some principle. Hair walking, Dr. Pierre Landedal. Good evening. I stood up. Good evening. Everybody sit down. I am Pierre Lander Dove, and I am the leading hematologist at the University of Abidjan. And I have been treating a sickle cell patient for 14 years, AS group. And what is significant in this patient is that every time there is, he's under stress. Lactochomia shows up in his blood under certain stress condition. Lactochomia shows up. I said he just did the first mistake. I didn't say anything because these doctors went to medical school. I didn't go to any school. They should hear what this man is saying, but they're not listening. I have been treating this patient for 14 years. And that the cone is always present under certain stress condition. And they begin to give this man a standing ovation. Oh my God, what am I going to do? I stood up. I said, Dr. Landedoff, I am a little bit confused. And it could be because of my ignorance that I am confused. Not because you are not intelligent. It could be my ignorance. But since you are the doctor and you are the intelligent one, I expect for you to help me. Did you say that your patient shows lactochromia under certain stress conditions? He said, yes, yeah, do you disagree? Not at all. Not at all. But that uh, Landerdahl isn't lactoconia a byproduct or a derivative of lactic acid? He said yes. And lactic acid is a derivative, a byproduct of milk? He said yes. Right there. He destroyed his whole premise. 
What are you giving a black man milk that has sickle cell anemia? You see? But these things are not registering with us. We want to believe that we cannot offer a position that is credible and it could not come from a black man. Especially one like me. How could you believe me when I didn't go to school? When it is school that determines whether you are smart or you are dumb? Well, I must be dumb. But in my dumb state of being, I have pure agents, you can send on lupus and herpes and cancer and blindness. So what's going on? Am I really dumb? So I said to him, Dr. Landedorf, what is sickle cell anemia? This response was truthful. I don't know. I said thank you. This article in the Amsterdam News states that Emma Wright, a former sickle cell patient, after being on your dietary regimen, has been cured of sickle cell. Uh, if so, how come the medical world does not know about all these miraculous cures? Well, it could be attributed that the very premise that they use is the usage of carcinogens and inorganic substance could be undermining uh, their profession. But if we look at the history of medicine, we find that the credit was given to one Hippocrates as being the father of medicine. Didn't he build the foundation of medical science by using herbs to reverse pathology? Sure, he used herbs, and he was successful in removing all pathologies. But he used herbs. So if the father of medicine used herbs to remove pathology, then why should the physician use chemicals today? That question should be asked of them. What is the reason? Now, as for the miracles, the herbs assimilate because they contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. This is the vehicle that would allow any substance to assimilate within your biological structure. The presence of carbon that only comes from the plants. It does not come from some oxide or inorganic substance. But as for Ms. Emma Wright and her sickle cell, the mucus was invading her blood plasma, breaking it from a circle into a sickle, allowing oxygen and iron to escape. That's one, that is one of the things that we also found in our journey into this thing we call the African biomineral balance, is that like the burdock eats iron and the kalawala phosphate, potassium phosphate, the black man needs large amount of nascent iron. That is his mineral. Like iron is consistent with the burdock, like bamboo shoots and berries are consistent with the, with the gorilla, all plants that contain iron is consistent with the genetic structure of the black race. In the case of Miss Emma Wright, iron was missing in her diet, not only in hers. Every, every so-called black American or every so-called black man throughout the world is lacking of iron. So what did we do? We cleanse the cells of the blood, cleanse the cells of the bone, cleanse the cells of the spleen, thus allowing rejuvenation in the organs that are responsible for delivering good, healthy red blood and giving the blood its strength by going again to the tropics and getting the herbs, such as the mucle, to make compounds with other herbs, which are 14, to rejuvenate the cells of the blood. And two months later, she came back and said that her sickle cell had disappeared. But this is a problem that is besetting Africa also, not only Miss Emma Wright. Every black living person. But not only did she have sickle cell, she told me that she was suffering with thalassemia, which I was unaware of, but I didn't care because she was going to undergo the same process as everyone else. She said her thalassemia had disappeared. But then she found out later when she was in Los Angeles that she ate something that I recommended to her not to eat, and her body went back into the same state that it was prior. But she changed her diet again, and again she saw where 
her body was back in normal state. So it shows that the diet of the African American, especially the black man, has to be considered now. Has, has to be considered because it is one that has never been presented to us. And it's very crucial, not only with the sickle cell, with any other pathology. Well, it certainly sounds like you know.